Who is the God that Jesus acknowledged? The God of Israel. God the Father. God, God is God, isn't he? My friend, God the Father is the only true God. Do you agree with Jesus' statement? Yes. You do? Yes. That means nobody else can be God. Do you agree with that statement? No, I'm not. I'm using the statement of Jesus. They arrive at the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. If they don't want the truth, then they say, I can't understand it, therefore I can't believe it. No, Jesus said there is only one true God. Who is that? The only true God. That, according to him, is the Father. You just said you agree with that statement. Is that right? Yes, sir. So what that means is that Jesus himself prayed to and worshipped a Unitarian God and not the Trinitarian God like the way you believe in. So you were doing well until you said what, what that means is now. <laughs> Jesus believed in God as his father. Yeah, right? and God. As his father and as his God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, very important. And he said, God, my father. Hmm. Now, when he was calling God his father, he was making himself equal with God. No. He was, that's why they put him on a cross. No, 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 you, you have fast forwarded so many things now. All throughout the Old Testament, they said God is our father for Israel. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Yeah. My issue is with the, with the belief that you somehow think Jesus is equal to God. That's what we do. Yes, that's Where is that in the Bible? It doesn't, come, it doesn't come from figuring out with your head. It comes from asking God who he is. Did Jesus ever advocate that? That he is a true God? Where? Show me. Show me any passage where Jesus claims to be God. Anything. Go on. Well, if you read, I could, but, but very simply, if you read the Old Testament, Isaiah 35, Isaiah 40, what you see is... Just quote one verse where Jesus is mentioned, and he says very clearly, unequivocally, that this is Jesus, who is God Almighty. Anything from the New Testament or even the Old Testament, no problem. Okay, okay just like the way you quoted John 17, 3, not me, you quoted that. Okay. Yeah. Give me one verse in the Quran where Muhammad says, I am a Ah, uh, it's changing the topic. Now that is changing the topic. Where does he say I am a prophet? Sorry? Muhammad says, First I'm and prophet. foremost, why are you changing the topic? Is it because you concede that Jesus never claimed to be God? No, no, I will look, I will, I will respond to your question. My friend, I will respond to your question, provided you answer mine. If you read the Old Testament, you'll see that the Messiah had to be God himself. No, show me back. Where? Show me where. Quote it, go on, you got the Bible on you, quote it to me. Quote it to me, because you're just making things up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if Emmanuel means God with us, yes. so anybody who has a name similar to something to do with God, for example, Israel, yes, Jacob's name, the one who fought with God, the one who struggled with God, does that mean he's God as well? It means God, God himself would come. But why are you rejecting Jesus' testimony that there is only one true God and that is only the Father and not the Trinity? No, we're not rejecting Jesus. You are. Because you're claiming Jesus is God when he never claimed that. You're putting words in, in the mouth of Jesus when he, look, you got a big New Testament, yeah? 27 books. Are you saying not even one verse from those 27 books where Jesus claims that he's God? Jesus said, right? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. He also says, I and the disciples are one. John chapter uh, 17, verse number 11. He says, I and the disciples are one as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, one at a time. So what I'm saying is that Jesus never claimed to be God Almighty. But Jesus, you know Jesus, he, he put his face on the floor and he worshipped and prayed to God. Does God pray to God? Does God ever pray? What's obvious? That he's a servant, not, the, not God? No, no, come on, let's be fair. God doesn't need to pray because he's the one who fulfills the prayers. If Jesus... If Jesus is praying, it only means that he's a servant of God, not God himself. Now you see, you're going through all this logic again. And say, it's not logic, I'm giving you verses. Like this, if God is this, if God is this. You'd be one of the people who said, if the Titanic was like this, like this, like this, it couldn't have sunk. That's you. That's no, I never used the Titanic argument. You did. That's your logic, not mine. Did, okay, is the, did Titanic ever claim to be God? It claimed to be unsinkable. Who claimed that? Titanic. No, no, Titanic doesn't talk. Who claimed it to be unsinkable? Exactly my point. Similarly, similarly, the Christians are claiming Jesus is God, but Jesus himself never claimed it. But why, why, why are you struggling to show me even one verse from the Bible? Why? Where he clearly claims to be God. Jesus says, I by myself can do nothing. Does that sound like God to you in John 5.30? Can God do nothing? 
Can God do nothing? Sorry, if God can do anything, why is Jesus saying, I by myself can do nothing? I'll show you many more. That is what Jesus, like I said, Jesus prayed. Jesus claimed that he can do nothing by himself. Jesus, in fact, no, I'm showing you from your Bible very clearly the words of Jesus, which clearly prove that he is not God Almighty, neither did he claim to be. That's the reason you're struggling to show me even one passage. Well, show me your... Okay, I think it's your delusion that Jesus is God. That's the reason you cannot show me a word. It's a delusion, I'm sorry to say that. God, have you seen God? Have you seen God? What do you mean God showed it to you? Have you seen God? Have you seen God? How did you see God? If not physically. Yeah, that's a different topic. Why didn't you show me something from the Bible, my friend? Instead of going to Titanic and what do you think and what I think, show me from the Bible because that is what your faith is based on, I'm assuming. Yeah? There's no mention of Jesus in the Old Testament. Not even once. Yeah. And nowhere in the, in the Old Testament is the Messiah to be God. Absolutely. All over it. All over it. Show me one then. Why are you struggling? You keep mentioning Isaiah or whatever, but you cannot even quote the verse. Show me the verse where it says the Messiah is to be God Almighty. Go on. Yeah, Isaiah 7, 14, it says, The virgin shall be with child, and she shall give birth, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Yeah, where does it say he's Messiah? Where does it say that he's the Messiah? It also says he'll have his offsprings in Isaiah 53. Have you forgotten that bit? You see, this is the problem. The Christians only take parts of the verse instead of look, looking at the context because if you look at Isaiah 53 it mentions about the uh, the progeny or the offsprings of Jesus this Jesus have children so if Jesus have children will they be God as well because God's son is God so because Jesus is God his children will also be God so how many gods have you got now why can't you read it no no I trust you why don't you read it Go on. it's not like we don't trust you when it comes to reading your Bible? Which one do you ask me to read? Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God who will come and save you. Nothing to do with the Messiah. Nothing to do with Messiah. I'm afraid. Nothing to do with Messiah. Look here. Why didn't you show me a single verse, my friend? Who is the Savior? Okay, who was the Savior? Wait a bit. Who was the Savior of the people of Israel? Moses. No, Moses. Ask the people of Israel. Ask the Jews today. They'll tell Moses was our Savior. In the time of Jesus, he was the Savior. In the time of Prophet Muhammad, he is going to be the one, if you believe his message, is going to be the Savior. Okay? So every prophet is a Savior to his people. Very simple as that. But Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger, is Savior to mankind. And that is the reason in your book, it says here or Israel. It doesn't say universal message. It's only for a particular people. The people of Israel, the Israelites. And that is the reason Jesus says, I have not come except for the lost sheep of Israel. Are you guys the lost sheep of Israel? Absolutely not. So it's not come for you. It's come for them. So come on, show me a clear verse from the Bible where Jesus claims to be God. It's very easy to make claims, but quite difficult for you guys to prove it. The problem with Christians is they actually ignore the explicit verses like the one in John 7 and 3 and they go to ambiguous ones which doesn't prove anything about Jesus' as divinity. Make sure it's got to do with Jesus this time. Now you read it. And who's, who's speaking that? God. Which God? The Father, the Son or the Holy Spirit? God is God. No, 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 no. No, no, God is not God according to you guys. You say Jesus is fully God, and then you say the Father is fully God. You, and you say the Holy Spirit is fully God. You have three gods. Which one is that you're talking about? Uh, you see how quickly put it inside? Because you realize that without reading without context does not make sense, my friend. Okay, do not decontextualize your own scripture. This is exactly why Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. Because they used to twist the scriptures, and that is the reason Jesus called them snakes and an adulterous nation. Yes, and that is the reason they were rebuked by Jesus Christ. And you are following in the footsteps of the Pharisees by twisting the scriptures. When the scripture says clearly that Jesus is actually a servant of God and he's the one who prays to God and he's the one who worships God, then how can you claim that he's almighty God? No, that's a passage in the Bible. 
Okay? He put his head on the floor. Yes? And he prayed to his God. Take this cup away from me. And even after that prayer, his prayers got rejected because according to your narrative, he still ended up on the cross. So you see, Jesus is begging God to take the cup away from him. But ultimately, that prayer of his was rejected. Jesus prayed three times that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes? And all three times his prayers got rejected one by one. What does that tell you? If your God's prayers get rejected by his God, what chances have you got? If Jesus' prayers get rejected, then what chances have you got that your prayers will be accepted? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. That's the first, that's the first logical and truthful statement you made. That if Jesus' prayer got rejected, then there's no chance for you. Yes? By the way, do you agree with me that Jesus' prayer did get rejected? No. So did he get crucified on the cross or did he not? Then if he got crucified, what was he praying in the Garden of Gethsemane? To save him from the crucifixion. So how is, it, how is that prayer not rejected? Don't you know why this Garden of Gethsemane? Yes? Yeah, we're not talking about, you, you're fast forwarding to the resurrection. Let's talk about the crucifixion first. Absolutely. Every prayer... I mean, wait a minute. Every prayer that you pray to God is always with His will, yeah, not the will, the will of the, the one who's praying. It's the will of the Father to crush Him. That's what we read in the Old Testament. Okay. So, do you think the will of the Father is different to that of Jesus? Well, they, they, Jesus said, "Not my will, but Your will." Exactly, which means that they have different wills. Do you agree? Well, it's not. It's not clear from the text. Not clear. Well, you just said it yourself. Not my will, but Your will be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how is it not clear? It was the Father's will. Exactly. So, is the Father's will different to that of Jesus? It's so clear. You just said it yourself. Where does it say it's different? He said, let it be thy will, not my will. Okay? So thy will is your will. My will is will of Jesus. So clear. The point is that they have different wills. They are different, they are different uh, what do you say, entities. So one is God and the other is servant. One is God, the other is servant. That's the will of Jesus. He said, I lay my life. You want to come forward, my friend? You can help him out, no problem. What is I? I'm saying exactly what he said. Yeah, but that, what does that mean? Did, did he commit suicide or did it, people his own? It's not the same will because if it was the same will, Jesus said, "Take this cup away from me." What does that mean? It means save me from the crucifixion. What was the will of the Father to make sure that he dies on the cross, according to your narrative? Yeah, according to the Bible's narrative. So both the wills are not the same. One is one is inclined towards being saved. That he's begging God. He's literally falling on his face on the ground and he's praying to God to save him from the cross. Okay? You can't reconcile it because they're different wills. They're two different wills. So why is he begging God if he wants to lay down his life? Doesn't make sense. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying there's no way you can reconcile it because in one passage, Jesus is literally begging his God to save him. In another passage, he's saying, I lay down my life. But what does that even mean? When somebody lays down their life by themselves, that is considered as suicide. Are you telling me Jesus committed suicide? There you go. So he did not lay down his life. He was killed in a crucifixion. And Jesus, is, you know what Jesus is called for doing that? He became a curse. Can you imagine? Your own God is being called a curse. No, no, no. Jesus is not my God. He's your God. Jesus, your God is being condemned as a curse in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Try to reconcile that. Yes? Yeah, a curse. Go and read it if you don't believe me. I'll give you the verse. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. According to Paul, he became a curse for you. You know in the Quran, what do the Muslims read? Yes? We seek refuge from the shaitan who is cursed. So in the Quran, the shaitan is the one who is cursed. In the Bible, Jesus is cursed. In the Quran, Allah blesses him and blesses his mother Mary. Yes, they're given high, high status. They, they're revered, revered to the status of, of prophet and someone who receives message from God. Even Mary, his own mother, received message from God through an angel. So you see, they're given respect. Whereas in the Bible, unfortunately for you guys, because this is your role model. This is whom you say is our God. The very Bible, which is supposed to be the word of God, rejects him or condemns him as a curse. Now that to me is an insult to my messenger, to my Messiah and to my prophet, that your Bible condemns him as a curse. I do not accept that. You might do. But this is an insult to my prophet, my messenger and my Messiah, who is Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam. 
That is, I gave you the passage in the Bible. If you don't want to believe it, if you want to remain in denial, that's up to you, my friend. Do you agree that he was condemned in the Bible? Did you say absolutely? Why would God be condemning Jesus? Why does he need to condemn him for saving me? He should be praised for that. If Jesus is following the commands of God, yes, and if he is willingly going to the cross, then he should be praised. He shouldn't be cursed. If he does everything according to what God expects of him, then he should be rewarded. Yes? Imagine you have a child and your child obeys you. Yes? Would you condemn him as a curse or would you say he's an obedient child so I should reward him? You see what I mean? You reward him. But in the Bible it's the other way around. When this son did everything to the letter and he obeyed God Almighty, he's cursed. And in fact his, his prayers are even rejected. Yes? And you see in the, in the Old Testament, G God says that he will not forsake the believers. The true believers of his, he'll not forsake. Yeah. What happened to Jesus on the cross? He was forsaken. Why? Why was he forsaken by his God? Because he was God himself. That doesn't he make sense. <laughs> of course you go there. You see? <laughs>